Hey, Mike C. Kalanta here. Welcome back to the training room. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about weapon strikes as well as close quarter utilization of your handgun. Real quick before we begin, I'm using an NLT uh, CERT pistol. This is actually made um, for dry firing and shooting. It actually emits a little laser beam. It's a non-live fire pistol, so I can't clear it for you, or, or of course I would. Founder and designer Mike Hughes probably wouldn't necessarily approve all the striking I do with a handgun, but hey, so what? He gave me the pistol to use, so I'm going to train with it a little bit, okay? First of all, let's talk about the basics and the concepts. Why in the world, if I have a handgun that's operational, would I strike somebody with my handgun? Well, think about the circumstances. Number one, as I said, operational. What if your handgun is not operational? You're literally in the middle of a close quarter fight, tie up, bad things are happening, and during the shooting, the handgun stopped working. You can't take the other hand off of the person or utilize it. Maybe it's occupied or injured to clear the handgun. So that's number one. Number two, maybe I got in a circumstance or a situation where I got my handgun into the fight, but as I'm fighting this guy and I want to shoot him or I get into a good shooting position, now I've got my eight-year-old or my family member or whoever else around somewhere. And it's crazy and it's dynamic and they're fighting. Or maybe it's your teammate. Maybe you're a SWAT operator or a military guy and you got your teammate and you're not exactly sure where they are. So granted, a shoot through in this human body, most of the time that bullet in the body is going to stop. But if not, hey, if you don't know what the backstop is, remember those safety rules. We're not going to fire that handgun, okay? So let's talk about striking and integrating some of the training I'm going to do. I'm going to use my buddy Bob here. Bob is my best friend, and I get to beat him up on a consistent basis. But I'm going to show you a few neat things that you can operate and utilize when practicing your strikes, and I do this routinely. Uh, most of the time when I'm operating, if I'm not actually shooting from an extended position, I'll shoot from a high ready position. The first thing that I'm going to show you is a striking technique and a shooting position that's going to disrupt exactly what he has the ability to do and it allows me to make sure that everything is good to go before I pull that trigger. And then the second thing I'm going to do is teach you how to integrate that as along with an actual strike of the handgun itself, meaning I'm going to strike him with my handgun because remember, if this thing is not operational, I got to do something with it. I might as well utilize it like a hammer. Okay. So first striking technique from the high ready position, I'm actually going to retract the handgun while I rotate my hand off of it. And notice when I'm doing this, I'm actually rolling. I call this the Judy chop. We'll talk to you about that in a later video. I'm actually rolling off my Judy chop position. So I'm not putting my hand in front of the muzzle and I'm driving my hand, literally a palm strike straight into his face. And while I'm doing that, I'm actually building my close quarter position along my body. And remember this close quarter position is a position where my thumb creates a mechanical offset. I don't need to look at my gun to know where it's pointed. And to test this technique when I'm actually doing, doing my training drill, what I will do is I'll actually throw my strike, hit him off balance and I'll press the trigger. And if you could see what's going on down there on the lower part of the target, as long as that dot is somewhere center line, that's what I want to look at. Now I don't want to, when I do my strike, I don't want to cant this muzzle up because now if you can see my muzzle is pointed up near or very close to where my hand is. I want to keep that muzzle down so my index position is in a lower position. So once again, rewind and I want to learn how to actually safely take my hand back and put it on the handgun without putting it in front of the muzzle. I want to practice that habit. So once again, I'm going to build my position and strike at the same time, fire my shots, okay? Using my body for leverage, I'm actually turning with my hips, boom, fire my shots, okay? Fire my shots, boom, boom. And what I can do is I start to get good at this, I can start to switch hands, put the gun in the other hand, strike, build the position, fire my shots. Strike, build the position, fire my shots. Bring my hand back. Strike, build the position, fire my shots. And if you want to amp it up, you can set a second target. So I have these little one-third size cardboard targets that I can hang all over my house or my dry fire targets. And now I can pretend that well, I'm not just dealing with this person, but now I've got an additional threat somewhere in the environment. So let's say I've done my strike, boom, push them off balance, shoot, and I'm still maintaining some sort of control, digging these fingers into his eyes, being as aggressive as I possibly can. And I recognize there's a second threat. I could practice building my one-handed shooting position and firing those shots. So I like to integrate things. So I'll actually strike and shoot. So strike, shoot, boom, 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 and fire my shots on a second target. So I'm striking, boom, 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 fire my shots on a second target. Okay, strike and shoot, boom, boom, boom. Fire my shots on the second target and then I could clear and then work on building the high ready position. So go through a minute or two of these with either side. So for, for example, a minute striking as aggressively as you possibly can, building the position, getting that heart rate up, do your rest period, change sides, do the other side, work that drill, and then start to build upon that drill by adding additional targets in your environment. Or if you really want to amp it up, 
Do the same strike on the strike dummy, but three or four targets behind you, but mark them in a manner where you've got to ID who or what they are. So for example, you could practice your striking and then visually have to identify the threats and put shots on those threats behind you. So you're starting to integrate long range or longer range one-handed shooting with your strike position as well as your extreme close quarter position. So remember, practice these drills repetitively. Make sure you're practicing them perfectly so you enhance your technique and you learn what you need to learn. And until then, train hard.